Hello everyone, welcome to Pedro Plays. In this episode, we are going to look over the whole of January uh, and see the sign-ins uh, that we made this uh, transfer window. Well, how's it going everyone? Hope you are well. Uh, just um, uh, first of all, just to explain, I've uh, been a little bit quiet on this channel. Uh, recently over the last uh, last couple of weeks uh, right in the middle of um, a little bit of a house move actually um, so moving from one place to another uh, so been sort of viewing a lot of properties and uh, sort of packing the house up uh, getting ready to move uh, we'll be moving hopefully uh, towards the end of end of May um, so I'm hoping to get as many videos recorded uh, between now and then so that we can hopefully keep up to date with the channel um, so this uh, update has been a little bit sort of late late coming uh, particularly on the Football Manager series. Now, um, you may remember that before the break, uh, we were uh, just heading into January, and um, uh, heading into January in a very good position, actually. We were uh, sort of right up in the top half of the table uh, in the playoff zone, and, yeah, very much going uh, for promotion to, to the championship. Uh, now, I've just finished January, actually, um, on this, and I'm going to cover uh, a few of the results um, but it's not been good at all. Actually, <laughs> January we've had a, jed, uh, a dreadful January. It's been uh, been pretty bad. Um, so let me uh, now. What shall I do? I'm gonna let let me introduce a few new players to you first of all. Um, See, so we have been busy this January. Uh, we've been busy uh, in not only offloading a few players, but also getting a few extra players in. Now you may remember that we was looking uh, to perhaps sell Bradley Dack. Now that transfer didn't actually go through in the January window. Um, we had a couple of uh, offers that came in, but none of them really matched um, his asking price. And I didn't. I, I thought we could get more, or I thought it was valued more. Maybe it's just me being a bit greedy. Um, but he is still with us, didn't quite go through. I offered him out lots of times to different, different clubs. Um, but yeah, it just didn't happen. So looking forward really to having him here for the rest of the season. Hopefully trying to help us with our promotional push uh, a little bit. Um, and hopefully we can make the most of him. And, you know, maybe at the end of the end of the season, we'll, we'll look to sell him instead. Um, did get rid of uh, a few players, though. And I've got a um, a little bit of a list here. Um, so the um, the first the first sale was uh, Rory Donnelly. Um I've said in previous episodes, not really a huge fan of him. He just doesn't really score enough for a striker for me. Um, so I managed to sell him. I think he went to Walsall in the end uh, for 70000 um, And obviously we got to use some of that money. Uh, obviously Jonathan Bond, his, uh, he was the goalkeeper who was on loan from Reading. Uh, unfortunately, his uh, loan ended. I was gutted about that because I thought he was doing you know, quite well and brought a lot to the team. But just couldn't extend it. They uh, they want to give him a run in the first team himself uh, themselves. So uh, that was the end of it for him. Uh, then Frank Nublé, uh, he actually left on a free transfer, so it was the end of his contract. And I didn't really think he was doing too much, so I decided to to let him go. Uh, another one was Joe Quigley. I haven't seen any of him um, in any of the episodes. Main reason being is he was uh, on loan with us and he was injured the whole whole time through. Looked at how long he had left and um, still had several months left um, so we probably would have only seen him for the last couple of games so decided uh, that it was about time that I terminated his loan and uh, another one was Josh Pask as well he uh, actually asked to have his loan terminated because he hadn't been playing so got rid of him as well and Chris Hurd was the other one again he hadn't played too much sort of a few games here or there um, but got rid of him and he went for 24,000 so not no real sort of big money outgoings um, did get a few players in though uh, a couple of players on free and a couple of players uh, on loan so the uh, first one that I did sign was this guy here Carton Cole now if you are a, a fan of English football and you followed um, English football for a number of years you should be aware of Carton Cole he's been around um, English football for a long time uh, obviously spent a lot of years at West Ham did start his career off at Chelsea though and you can see he was quite a prolific uh, scorer for West Ham uh, over a number of number of different years so um, I managed to sign him came over on a free transfer wage is pretty comparable to the rest of the, rest of the squad I mean you look at Paul Koncheski who 
you know, I was trying to also get rid of in January, but, but couldn't get anything. He's on three grand a week. So Carl Carl's not, not on that much, and I think he's, you know, he's going to be uh, a bit of a better better player for us. Now, um, uh, who else did we get in? We got Matthew Pennington uh, on loan, this guy here. A very happy guy. Look, look at him there. Uh, he's 22 years old, and he is on loan from Everton. And uh, he's only played one game so far, and I thought he did quite well in that. Um, he's obviously had a few different loan spells, at different League One clubs, uh, valued at 2.1 million, and looks to be sort of going in straight away to the first team. And I think he's going to be a good addition to try and help shore up that defence. Um, which, trust me, if you see, if you see in a minute how we got on this month, we definitely needed it. He was one of the late additions. Um, yeah, to, to our uh, to our transfer transfer bunch or kitty or, or I don't know what I don't know where I'm going with that <laughs> anyway um, one of the other players that we did get uh, was this guy Jerome Sinclair uh, currently on loan from us at Watford not paying his wages at all same with that Pennington guy not playing either of their wages so really good uh, additions to the squad I mean look at his finishing here his finishing is rated at 15 determination 19 some of his best attributes actually seen him play live a few times I'm also a Liverpool fan other than Gillingham fan and as you can see he was uh, at Liverpool for for a little while so sort of uh, followed his career um, just a little bit not a huge amount but but I've seen a few of his sort of features for the you know the youth sides of Liverpool uh, he did get a big money move to Watford uh, this year four million pounds he's so he's, he's rated quite highly and um, managed to get him on loan and um, yeah you'll see sort of how he got on in his first game with us um, but yeah good good addition and then the latest signing I've literally just just signed him so he's not played a game for us yet is this guy Morton Gamps Pedersen now he was a regular with Blackburn for a, a number of years and uh, he's also played for a couple of Norwegian sides of late uh, he is a Norwegian um, sort of primarily a left midfielder um, and I did see him. He did play against Gillingham, where uh, one of these years of Blackburn it's probably this year here in 2013-14 season. Uh, Gillingham drew Blackburn, and we played uh, against him. And I'd always been a bit of a fan. He's a bit of a free kick specialist as well, and sort of seeing him in the Premier League uh, was always quite a fan of him. Um, Watch this game with um, Gillingham v Blackburn, and they totally outplayed us. But you know, just seeing the quality um, that this guy had, I mean. It was just, I thought it was unbelievable. I think he's one of the best players um, that I personally witnessed playing against the Jills. He was, uh, yeah, just every single pass was, was almost spot on. And it, it was actually, in a way, he was mocking us a little bit. Every corner, you know, they went a couple of goals up, I think. And every corner he was taking, he was having a shot. <laughs> and like, I mean, they were causing loads of trouble as well. It wasn't just, you know, that he was being greedy. Actually, every time he did it, you know, the goalkeeper was having to pull off um, you know, absolutely incredible saves to try and um, to try and stop him from scoring. Um, so, a big fan of him, and uh, again, he was on a free transfer, and his wage uh, one thousand one hundred a week. So, he's actually will be one of our sort of lowest, um, you know, sort of first team or fringe players, um, sort of earning wise, um, that we have. And I've got him on a short contract, mainly till the end of the season, I think. Um, I oh, know actually sorry a bit longer than that um, but I thought he's got a lot of experience uh, he can play right across the midfield as well um, so I thought he's, he was worth a shot so I look forward to seeing how uh, how he gets on um, you know, let's have a look at the games that we we did play so I don't know if you can see here there's an awful lot of red um, now I think the last episode was uh, the game against Millwall on uh, New Year's Eve and uh, we lost that one 1-0 one um, and then you know we continued that losing streak as you can see here it's been absolutely dire so let's have a little look at, at some of these games um, just so I can show you now um, this game was uh, I actually thought we were going to win this one I must admit it was against Oxford Oxford were uh, sort of second in the table I think at this point and um, let me just skip with some of the sound here so you can hear it there we go um, so you can see Bradley Dak opened a scoring for us there on the 33rd minute and uh, that made it 1-0 uh, for us um, and then they score next by Wes Thomas 
you can see just sort of break through the centre of us quite quickly here and Wes Thomas scores uh, I think he's got a few goals this season actually so that was his ninth goal uh, of the season and then after that again we took the lead through Scott Wagstaff so not plays it to Kebe and then Kebe crosses it into Wagstaff and then slots it in I was getting a bit excited thinking, oh yeah, we're gonna, you know, break this run of two two losses on the trot. But we're gonna break this run and um yeah, it's gonna be good. And then on the sixty second minute, uh, Maguire goes and scores for them. Big long ball played for Thomas heads it on, Maguire scores, and that made it two two. And then they sort of just ran off with it after that. Um So yeah, shortly after that, on the 73rd minute, Wes Thomas goes and scores another one, a free second goal of the game. Again, another break through the middle and just slots it in. All the goals are just, you know, sort of calmly slotted in um, so far, which was a bit disappointing. This was actually Jonathan Bond's last game for us, I believe, so he was still in net for us. And then on the 80th minute, they got a penalty here. And... Um, there we go. Just go straight through his straight through his arm. So on the, you know, on this display, maybe it was a good thing that, <laughs> that Pond went. Um, but anyway, that was um, that was that game. So we lost at four two against Oxford. Um, now I do remember sort of changing the tactics a little bit for the next game where we played Wimbledon, um, trying to, you know, sort of improve things. I actually started with Elliot List because Cody McDonald is, has been out injured. He's, he's out injured this whole episode, unfortunately. Got injured right at the end of last episode. Um, so I tried Elliot List up front and he paid us off sort of straight away. Managed to score there and um, yeah, did did relatively okay in that in that game. So it was 1-0 at that point. Again, took the lead. And then unfortunately we got undone in the space of three minutes. Um, totally undone. We had a, a ball here played to Barcham, who then crossed it in, and Taylor scored that. Now, uh, Andy Barcham was uh, an ex Gillingham player, uh, ex Gillingham winger, um, and I suddenly started, you know, sort of seeing all the players that are in the Wimbledon squad, and thought, hang on a minute, there's quite a few ex Gillingham players in in, in this squad, and um, another one went and scored this, which uh, ended up being the winning goal, and that's Chris Welpdale. He also uh, used to play for Gillingham, uh, as did this guy here, Barry Fuller. Uh, Barry Fuller used to uh, be a Gillingham captain at one point. He's a local lad as well uh, for Gillingham, but currently playing and captaining uh, Wimbledon. Um, so really got sort of undone by our, our old players there. Um, and again, that was another, another loss, 2-1. And then the real kicker was this one here. Oldham were right towards the bottom of the table as well, and... You know, they just absolutely mullered us. At one point, they were 5-0 up. Um, you know, I won't go through too many of their, their goals, I don't think. But this guy here, McKay, just kept scoring so many goals. He didn't score this one, but he, he, he's, you know, scored... Um, no, he did score so many goals, sorry. I think he scored one or two past us. But, you know, he's... Yeah, he's got two past us. So, have a quick look. But, I mean, he's on, like, 20-something goals for the season in January. Um I did look at signing him but again that wasn't going to happen unfortunately maybe if we got rid of Bradley Dack we could sign him but look, that was his 20th goal and he went and scored another one after that um, which yeah was sort of unbelievable Bradley Dack did get a good consolation goal let's have a look at this one so it's uh, from quite far out Zella Lem plays it to Dack and then bang he just hits it shame we couldn't have done that you know a bit earlier on in the game perhaps when it was nil nil or one nil to them that would have been good um absolutely dreadful game though we did get Koncheski sent off in the first half which i don't think really really helped we didn't end up finish the game actually on nine men because kebe got injured and i'd already made subs then um that was definitely one game to to forget uh, and again i made massive changes after that and then we played yeovil this was in the check trade trophy south uh, third round um, so after this it goes to the semi-finals and then final so it progressed quite far but unfortunately did come to an end um, at this game uh, where we did lose 1-0 we played really really well though I'm not going to lie we played 
uh, very well throughout this game so it was a bit gutting to lose it I thought this could be one that was going to kick start things again for us if we get a win on this one um, this was Carlton Cole's first game as well played alright but he's a bit lacking of sort of match match fitness this is the only goal of the game from them you know just sort of a rebound keeper does well at first but you know he obviously follows it in um, manages to score so that was 1-0 again another loss and then uh, after that Sheffield United now this one again we got a player sent off in the 63rd minute made it really difficult for us uh, and you can see they ended up just scoring three goals I mean looking at the possession wise as well all these all these games you can see that we've had decent possession decent number of shots but for some reason it's just been appalling we've just been letting goals in left right and centre and I think it was at this stage when I was thinking that we really need to try and get a defender in to try and help us out um, because you know it just was falling apart and obviously managed to get Pennington after that uh, so this was the most recent game then played Shrewsbury Town and um, you know this is, let's have a look at this one so Carlton Cole got the first goal this was his uh, first goal for us I believe um, or maybe his second let's have a look uh, so yeah, well worked goal actually he sort of gets on the end of it and then just uh, he does uh, yeah it was his first goal for us he does sort of um, Nick Martin's goal a little bit it was sort of was going in anyway and he just blasted it in from about half a yard out but nevertheless it's his first goal um, and then they did come back though on the 43rd minute they equalised from a uh, free kick there similar goal to ours really sort of ball bouncing around in the penalty area uh, before it's eventually turned in and then um, Carlton Cole was getting a little bit tired towards sort of the latter parts of the game so good opportunity to give Sinclair a runabout and he managed to score this Wagstaff another great cross and um, Sinclair gets on the end of it uh, but before that we were 2-1 down at that point I'm showing these in the wrong order uh, this was Shrewsby's goal here we go again well worked and Ebanks Blake gets that so that was 2-1 and then afterwards Sinclair scored to bring it back to 2-2 so again when the 2-1 I thought we were going to lose that but again if we look at the possession here and the shots 51% of the possession and uh, 17 shots um, so you know there's nothing really wrong when you look at that we've had enough possession we've had enough shots we've had more shots than them and more shots on target than them but we just are not winning we're having a dreadful time <laughs> um, so where does that leave us in the uh, table so that leaves us down at ninth. So we've started to drop down from you know being up in second, third, and fourth. We started to really drop down. This recent run of games has not been good for us. Uh, we're still four points away uh, from the playoff zone, though. So it's not all doom and gloom. There is still a chance that you know if we put a little bit of a, a run together and we get on a bit more of a uh, of a winning streak, then there is definitely still you know chance for us to uh, to make the playoffs i think realistically automatic promotion is um, maybe a bit out of touch now um so i think the playoffs are going to be our goal uh, for the uh, last part of the the season the last few games so next up we have bradford city uh and um where are bradford in the table they're 16th so kind of hoping you know just played shrewsbury admittedly they're towards the bottom of the table kind of hope, hoping that we get a little bit of confidence from that hopefully a few of these new players are bedded in a little bit better and um, you know we can really really push on now looking at Cody McDonald he is also coming back into full fitness in two days it's going to leave us with a little bit of a problem now because we've got Jerome Sinclair Carlton Cole Cody McDonald there are three strikers or three main strikers and you know it's going to be hard to choose between them particularly if uh, all three of them uh, are in form at the same time um, but you know I'm still optimistic for this season I still think we can do it I still believe we can uh, get into the championship and um, you know make this a season to remember now if you are following Gillingham in real life uh, as the, the time I'm recording this we are 
actually heading into the last game of our season in real life and it's been a totally different story to, to this one um, we are literally one point above the uh, relegation zone and it's going down to the last game Basically, if we lose and Port Vale win uh, we are out we're, we're down in well not out we're down in League 2 um, which would be a disaster you know the year before we were you know right on the edge of sort of playoffs and automatic promotion really and similar to what's happened in in this season for me you know I had a really really good first half of the season and then second half of the season was diabolical um so I'm really hoping our game doesn't go like that because if it does I'll be sacked early part of the new season um so hopefully that doesn't happen because you know it's a Gillingham football club series if I if I get sacked what will we do um but I don't think it's going to get to that. We're going to turn this around and we're going to get back into winning ways. And yeah, I'm hoping next episode will be a totally different story. So I'm looking to record a few episodes, like I say, sort of back to back so that I've got a little bit of a, um, a buffer. Um, I obviously won't release them all at the same time. I'll sort of pick them out over the next, next you know, couple of weeks. But um, thank you very much for watching anyway. If you did enjoy this, uh, please make sure that you uh, hit the like button and uh, if you've not subscribed already do make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, it really does mean a lot and um, just like to say as well make sure you uh, are following me on Facebook if you don't already um, it's at Pedro Plays Games I think uh, if you search for that you should should see my uh, my little logo there and make sure you, that you'd like us on Facebook so you keep up to date with um, with a lot of stuff that's going on and yeah thank you very much for watching guys sorry it's been a little while um, but yeah, all the best and take care.